When you're at home, you've got man's best friend. Once on the road, you've got the trucker's best friend if you have a Jake brake engine brake on board from Jacobs Vehicle Systems. First revealed in 1960, the Jacobs engine brake would revolutionize the trucking industry by providing a unique and valuable supplemental braking function to dramatically improve truck safety and productivity. The founder of the Cummins Engine Company, Clessiel Cummins, conceived the engine compression release brake following a close encounter with death after narrowly avoiding a train crossing his path at the end of a long downhill descent. The brakes in his truck failed by the time he'd reached the bottom of the Cajon Pass roadway in Southern California. His vision was that the engine and power that brought the truck up the hill could also be utilized to bring the truck safely down the hill. By virtue of a family connection, Clessy was introduced to the founders of the well-established Jacobs Drill Chuck Company. The two joined forces to further develop and produce Clessy's vision. And thus, the Jacobs engine brake was born, as the Clessy L. Cummins division of the Jacobs Manufacturing Company was established. Within two years of the sale of the first engine brake for Cummins NH engines, engine brakes were a widely accepted device. Nicknamed the Jake brake, Jacobs developed a brake for the two-cycle Detroit diesel. Two years later, Mack Trucks also turned to Jacobs for an engine brake. When Caterpillar entered the heavy truck market, they too requested a brake for their engine. And today, Jacobs Vehicle Systems is the leader in engine retarding and valve actuation technology, with research, engineering, and development efforts rivaled only by the aerospace industry. Jacobs is committed to providing the highest quality, highest performance, most reliable engine retarders on the market, and to be the industry leader in new engine retarding and engine valve actuation developments. The trucking industry has evolved since the 60s as well. Today's trucks carry heavier loads and travel at higher speeds. To increase fuel efficiency, today's vehicles have reduced driveline frictional drag, reduced parasitic drag, and are more aerodynamic. The result is less natural retarding, which means a greater reliance on the vehicle's service brakes. Now, more than ever, the need for a supplemental braking system to enhance vehicle control is a necessity. Vehicle drive trains have also become technologically advanced. With engine and transmission control modules and features like anti-lock braking, auto shift transmissions and collision warning systems, the Jake Brake engine brake has become an integral part of modern truck function and design. Our Jake, I guess it wouldn't be without it. I can remember the days before we had them and uh, for us, uh, I, I believe if we'd have to start driving without it, we would probably find another occupation. Actually, with Jake brakes, we rarely have any service issues. Only if we have to overhaul your engine or go through your engine, have an in-chassis overhaul, we'll install a tune-up kit, reset the Jake brakes on the engine when we, re when we rebuild it, and uh, that's basically all we ever have to do on them. The Jake Brake Engine Brake is a vehicle retarding device used to slow the vehicle by modifying the engine's exhaust valve timing. By opening the exhaust valves near the end of the compression stroke, the work done by the engine to compress the air in the cylinder is released to the exhaust system, and the power is not returned to the piston. The vehicle's momentum through the wheels and drive line is all that keeps the engine turning. Essentially, the Jake Brake engine brake transforms your power-producing diesel engine into a power-absorbing air compressor. This is achieved by an electronically controlled hydraulic device that is actuated by electrical current and put into motion while under hydraulic lock. The engine brake is mounted to the cylinder head or built into a rocker assembly and is mechanically activated by the engine's rocker arm. When the dash-mounted power switch is set to the on position, the engine brake will activate as soon as the driver steps off the throttle when the clutch is engaged. The engine brake will stay on when the driver applies the service brakes as well. 
This combines the power of the Jake Brake engine brake and the vehicle's service brakes for maximum slowing effort. To explain what happens during this time, let's go back a step. If the power switch is in the on position, and the engine electronics determine that engine braking is required, voltage is ready to be delivered to the engine brake solenoids to activate the engine brakes. When the driver releases the throttle and has the clutch engaged, voltage is applied to the engine brake solenoids. When the solenoid receives voltage, the valve opens, allowing the engine oil to travel to the control valve. The control valve travels upward with the pressure, and the internal ball check unseats. This allows oil to flow to the master-slave circuit. Under this pressure, the master piston now moves outward to contact the rocker arm. As the camshaft rotates, the rocker rises, forcing the master piston back into the housing. This forces the oil in the brake circuit back towards the control valve, which seats its ball check, creating a hydraulic lock in the brake. Now, with the sealed hydraulic passage between the slave and master pistons, the slave piston moves in response to the master piston's motion. The rocker's back and forth movement is what ultimately controls this exhaust valve movement. This happens 17 times per second at 2100 RPM, which accounts for that distinctive sound through the exhaust system when the engine brakes are in operation. When you hear this sound, your engine is being transformed into a power-absorbing air compressor. The work that the engine does to compress the air inside the cylinder is released to the exhaust system, with no power returned to the engine. Now the vehicle's momentum, through the wheels and drive line, keep the engine turning. As the cycle repeats and power is absorbed, the vehicle slows down. As soon as the driver disengages the clutch or steps on the throttle, supply voltage is cut off to the solenoid valves and the drop in supply oil pressure is enough for the control valve inner spring to push the control valve back down. The remaining oil in the master-slave circuit is pushed out of the housing. With no oil pressure, the brake's pistons stay away from the rockers and valves, and the brake is inactive. This deactivation occurs quickly. So now you know the science of how your Jake Brake Companion operates. It's time to discuss when and how to operate your Jake Brake Engine Brake. As with any accessory to your vehicle, you should always first read the operating instructions contained in your vehicle manuals. Most aspects will be covered in this video, but your vehicle manufacturer can provide functional details that are specific to your vehicle. It's important to note that the Jake Brake engine brake is a vehicle slowing device, not a vehicle stopping device. If you need to bring your vehicle to a complete stop, you still need to use the vehicle service brakes. The overall objective of using a Jake Brake Retarder is to slow the vehicle and maximize control without use of the vehicle's service brakes, whether it be in traffic, on highway off-ramps, in flatlands, or downhill grades. Maintaining your vehicle's control speed allows the service brakes to stay cool for quick stopping events. Service brakes heat up with continued use. Once hot, brakes fade and become much less effective. Braking material wears significantly faster at that point as well. This heat also causes excessive wear of the vehicle's wheel ends. Even tires will deteriorate faster with this increased heat. However, there are times when you should not utilize the power of your engine brake. You should exercise caution when operating the Jake Brake engine brake when bobtailing or pulling an empty trailer. And when driving slippery roads, do not use the engine brake. Single drive axle vehicles may require particular caution. If you have tandem axles with a power divider, the engine brake will not change how you should use the power divider function. However, you should reference the vehicle manufacturer's instructions for proper use. Let's take a look at these typical controls for a Jake brake engine brake. There's one switch that is the master power on off and another to select the power level. In many applications, you'll find a three-position switch. This allows you to select between low, medium, and high power settings. When it is appropriate to use the Jake Brake Retarder, 
First, make sure that the Jake Brake engine brake switch is in the off position when starting a cooled engine. Then, once the engine oil has reached normal operating temperature, you can turn the switch to on. Your load and road conditions determine the power level you'll need to obtain a safe control speed. When the road is dry, and you've got a full load, you'll probably be in the highest power setting. In flatland areas, you may only need a medium or low power setting to control your speed. Another important impact on engine brake performance, other than the power switch, is engine speed. As engine RPM goes up, so does retarding horsepower, the engine braking power that slows your vehicle. Naturally, you want to maximize your engine braking effectiveness by downshifting. To keep engine RPM up without overspeeding your engine, your fleet may determine max RPM guidelines. When driving on flat lands, you may find that the engine brake is desirable for deceleration to speed limit reductions or to keep pace with the changing speed of traffic. If the roads are dry, you can start with the switch in high, and if you find that you're slowing too much, select a lower power setting. It's good practice to make sure that the engine brake is functioning properly well before you descend a long steep grade. This can be done by taking your foot off the throttle with the engine brake on. You'll feel it activate, letting you know that it's ready for use. Before going down the hill, you also want to be sure that you're in the gear that you'll use for the entire downhill descent. Since you'll have the engine brake on, you should not pick up speed, nor should you need to change gears again. However, you must select the proper gear and be at the right road and engine speed to achieve a safe control speed. A good rule of thumb is to select the same gear that you would use to take you up the hill as you would to bring you down the hill. Removing your foot from the throttle should be all you need to get down this hill safely and without the use of the service brakes if you follow these instructions. Over time, you'll get a feel for the capacity of the engine brake with different gears, hills and trailer loads, and the use of your Jacobs engine brake will become second nature. As you know, roads can get slippery very quickly. Highways turn into oil slicks at the beginning of a rainstorm. Fallen leaves on a wet road make for even more treacherous conditions. Sleet, slush, snow or ice sometimes make roads impassable, so it's always important to note the road surface conditions. As the road surface changes, you'll need to adjust the power level and or deactivate the engine brake altogether. As soon as you have sensed that the road conditions have changed for the worse, shut off the engine brake. Once they improve, you can try to put the engine brake on in the low position only. If the wheels begin to slip, immediately discontinue use and do not attempt to use the engine brake again until road conditions significantly improve. Whenever testing your engine brake or service brakes, always be sure that you have plenty of distance between yourself and others. Never test your engine brake or service brakes while you're on challenging road conditions that require total vehicle control or when others are close by. For the safety of you and those around you, never use the engine brake to slow the engine down for easier shifting, commonly known as jake shifting. If you miss a gear by accident, you could stall the engine and lose control of your vehicle. Some automatic shifting transmissions utilize the engine brake to aid transmission shifting. However, this is achieved by a fail-safe, computer-controlled environment and should not be attempted with manual transmissions. It's important to note that most new automatic transmissions are electronically configured to disengage the engine brake at low engine RPM, which is especially helpful for stop and go driving. In fact, all electronic engines have low speed shutoff logic programmed into the engine ECM. Some older vehicles are fitted with a separate electronic module or a pressure switch in the transmission to perform the same function. Lastly, before shutting down your truck, turn the master power switch to the off position. This will make sure that you don't activate the engine brakes when you first start the engine, when it has not yet reached operating temperature. In the unlikely event that the engine brake malfunctions, turn the engine brake off and have the vehicle serviced immediately. If the engine brakes will not disengage at all, do not attempt to drive the vehicle. Driving the vehicle with the engine brakes engaged while your foot is on the accelerator can cause serious engine damage. Pull over and call for help. 
As trucks become more technologically advanced, their design and use include the function of the engine brake. For instance, the cruise control system will activate the engine brake to help maintain the set cruise speed. Many trucks have anti-lock braking systems. If an ABS event occurs, the Jake brake engine brake will shut off automatically and resume operation once the ABS event is over. Collision warning devices like Eaton's Vorad system will activate the Jake brake engine brake to help slow the vehicle in detected collision avoidance situations. For more information on the specific operation of ABS, auto shift, and collision warning system functionality and their interaction with the Jake brake engine brake, consult your vehicle's owner's manual. So let's review. We know why it's critical to have a Jake brake engine brake to help slow and control your vehicle. A great benefit is also the large savings in operating costs. You've seen how the engine brake works, and you know when and when not to use it. Plainly stated, you need to establish a safe control speed to descend a given hill, which is a function of your road speed, your load, engine speed, and the grade of the hill. Always be sure to test the engine brake and service brakes before descending a hill, and make sure there's enough room behind and around you when doing so. Make sure that you're at operating oil temperature before using the engine brakes, and always closely monitor road surface conditions as they change quickly. If you sense a loss of traction, discontinue use of the engine brakes. When attempting to use them again, start in the lowest power setting and work gradually higher. Resort to a lower power setting if wheel slip occurs or just turn the engine brake off until roads significantly improve. Also remember not to use the engine brakes when bobtailing or pulling an empty trailer. And avoid use of the engine brake to help with gear shifting. If used properly, the Jake Brake engine brake can and will be your best friend out on the road, allowing for shorter overall trip times, significant cost savings, and enhanced vehicle control. We hope that you appreciate using your Jake Brake engine brake as much as we appreciate providing it. Safe travels, and thanks for watching.